in the middle of a cold, dry desert. Strange towers of ice jet out of the otherwise barren landscape. How did they come to be? Examples of vertical ice formations have been recorded elsewhere on the planet. In Antarctica and the Arctic, small towers of ice can be found. It's a phenomena called sastrugi. Sastrugi form when wind blows the snow into these hard-packed ridges over the surface and form much like sand dunes do in a desert. When the wind picks up, it erodes the softer snow around the solid ridges, creating these peaks. Could these ice spires be a type of sastrugi? When sastrugis form, they get to be at most a few feet high, and they shift around in the wind. You need vast fields of snow in order to form them. These enormous towers, isolated by themselves with no snow on the landscape, couldn't have possibly been sastrugi. Scientists believe they have seen something like this before, just not on our planet. In 2015, NASA scientists found evidence of unusual ice formations on Pluto, resembling giant knife blades. Could these formations on the other side of the solar system provide answers to the ice formations in Ladakh? The spires we see on Pluto are up to 1,600 feet tall, two to three miles apart. So although they're a lot bigger than what we see, they are of similar shape. In order to understand whether the formations on Pluto offer any explanations for the ice towers in Ladakh, we need to understand how the spires on Pluto were formed. NASA scientists used weather prediction techniques to analyze how the formations on Pluto came to be. These formations on Pluto were formed by sublimation. It's when the sunlight vaporizes the ice and then it recondenses to slowly form these giant towers. Sublimation is the process of turning a solid substance to gas without liquefying it first. In the case of Pluto, the vapors then immediately refreeze creating 1,600 feet tall towers of ice. Could the same process that formed the giant spires on Pluto have created these giant ice spires? It's plausible, if it weren't for one glaring issue. You would need vast amounts of snow in order to sublimate enough water to form ice towers of this size. There's no snow around, so these towers couldn't have been formed by sublimation. Based on the size of the formations, the climate, and geography, there doesn't appear to be any explanation for how these structures could have been made naturally. Which begs the question, could they have been man-made? Some of the ice towers are adorned with prayer flags, which could lead one to believe that they're for religious or spiritual purposes. Their shape appears to be architecturally similar to the Buddhist temples found in the area, called stupas. A stone stupa is a domed structure used as a place of meditation. Often they'll be topped with a tall steeple and a private interior chamber to house religious relics or even act as a burial chamber. The Ladakh region is home to a large number of Tibetan Buddhists and there are the remains of about four or 5,000 stone stupas in the area. But the aerial and satellite imaging of the area appears to contradict this theory. Satellite images show us that these structures melt in the summer, and most of them by the end of the summer have completely disappeared. Why would you build a temple that only lasts for half of the year? When the structures do melt in the summer, the key to their mystery reveals itself. As the ice towers melt, a system of pipes is revealed that runs right through the middle of the structure. The pipes appear to be able to pump water from higher up in the mountains to the center of the frozen spires. This confirms they are man-made. 
But why would someone create a giant ice tower in the middle of a freezing desert?